Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. You guys know I love to buy these all-terrain vehicles, especially if they say Honda on them. This is a Honda Fortrax 300 four-wheel drive. And I picked it up as part of this deal. I actually went to buy the Honda ATC. And I said, by the way, you know, we closed the deal. I agreed to 300 on that. And I said, do you have anything else? And he said, oh, yeah, I got this Honda Four Tracks behind the shed. And then he went into the little story with it. The story he went into was it was running fine. This was his primary machine. He first got the three-wheeler. And then he got this one. So we let the three-wheeler sit until it got to be in its current dead position of unused, condition of unused. And he was using this thing. And he used to ride it through a lot of streams and so forth. And he's telling me that the rear end was making bad sounds. And he took the plug out right there and it was full of rusty water rusty water ran out of that so he kept telling me the rear end was blown out of this thing and you know you kind of take him for take what he's saying for granted but then i was thinking about it and he never said that it actually went clang pop he basically said it was making a bad sound he brought it home and he parked it. So where does this leave me? I'm hoping, right, fingers crossed here, as much as they will cross, I'm hoping that I get away with a cleanup, take it apart, clean it up well, get the rust out of the gears, get the rust off the bearings, Put it back together again and run it. That's what I'm hoping. You know, go through a few oil changes with the rear end and it's all good. It was running when he parked it. It was running fine when he parked it. But then I'm noticing some weird things like the front wheels are loose. Like if he parked it, how did the lug nuts get loose on the front wheels? And loose on both front wheels. I mean, that's just a little strange. What's also strange is that tire is mounted that way, and this one's mounted this way. Right? That's, that's a little odd. Before I took it, you know, you go through the basics. I mean, it seems to have some compression back there. Obviously, the seat needs some love atten and attention. I'm going to catch up with my buddy, my YouTube buddy, ATV Seat Exchange, and have him teach me about what to do when your foam gets like this. I don't know if you get an electric knife and sculpture it and just rebuild it like with yoga mats or, or what the story is. So... What's behind door number one? Oh. Interesting, it smells like gas. No, nah, it's water. So, that is definitely strange. I see a sticker there. I like to take a look at all the stickers. It helps me narrow down the years and so forth. This thing for date for um, normally there's a sticker on the pipes here or the other side, and I don't see a sticker there. But while I was floating around in the trunk here. I don't know what this does. Magic kill switch. Um, obviously, our friends the mice lived here. I found an hour meter. 
I mean if this is accurate 701 hours 702 hours that's really pretty young for these things right actually is it 700 hours if you were averaging 10 miles per hour right that's 7,000 miles that's actually quite a few miles <coughs> seems that these things are more or less blown up somewhere around four or five thousand I mean if they're well taken care of you get more than that but it just seems that these single cylinders especially off-road and all are well worn there take a quick look at the oil see what kind of trouble I got brewing there see if I got the milkshake going on yeah I've been very um, busy a lot of stuff no I don't see any water in there a lot of stuff going on got a bunch of projects you guys know my father passed on so there were a lot of arrangements to make with that been trying to keep up with my mother and siblings a little more so you know time 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 anyway so I paid um, well let's go through the deal for the two of these we agreed at 300 I said how much for both and he came back with um, $900 for the pair and I said, how about 850 And he took it. So I have 300 tied up there. Three, look at that. And I get five and a 50 on this guy. If I manage to clean it up and get it running as it is, obviously, get it so it's standing proper on all the tires and all that get it so it starts and runs and moves and does everything I really don't mind it being ugly I don't mind it at all because that means I could keep my other one all um, all in nice shape right it won't get all trashed so if I'm lucky for 550 I'll be running 550 plus some labor and some details if things aren't quite lucky, it looks like I could get a pumpkin, a differential, whatever you want to call that guy back there. It looks like I can dig up one of those for 350 with the gears in it so I don't have to do anything. They're about 350 bucks. It looks like I could buy the gears, the ring and pinion. And the socket to uh, to put it together. It, co it comes a kit: the ring, the pinion, and the socket. And I think it was about 120 bucks. And then, um, if you got to go for the rest of the bearings and all, it, it's you know that 250 to 350, depending on what you do with it, is is about the right price. This thing even as an ugly all-terrain vehicle once it's running I think if I just get it started and it's able to drag itself up and down the driveway it's worth more than the 550 I paid for it even for parts I mean hopefully you didn't strip out the starter gears how many shafts and you know the gas tank all that stuff do you have to get out of it I did get the key with it I mean how's that for a gas tank this is this is probably this is probably a $200 gas tank plastic the back plastic doesn't look bad it has the trunk and all um, the front, the front plastic looks, I don't know, 
this is kind of pushed in and back. I guess that's why the whole thing tilts tilts down. Oh, this is up pushed up. That meets up to the gas tank at all pretty good. That side actually looks pretty proper. This side that's messed up. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what kind of Mickey Mouse job. The way you got the mud flap there too. It's also missing the inner fender liner on that side, not this side. So, and that tire is off, and that tire is mounted backwards. So, I'm thinking it might have been crashed. Right, somehow or another. We do have some, that looks like it was broken. Yeah, this thing must have been wrecked at some point. Hey, for a, um, for a utility vehicle, for something to pull stuff around the property, I think it's going to be great. And I don't mind having a, another one around for parts. If one has bought any parts for any of these things, you realize that you can tie up big money fast. And uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to working on something different for a change. As you know, there are two of these in my hoard. This is the first Floor Tracks 300 I bought, 4x4. You can see got the right color scheme and all that. This one is in pretty much um, mint condition, right? Still has the original Goodyear's on it, and you can see the condition they're in. I paid heavy freight for this thing. I think I paid like 3,800. It was two years old. Um, it was heavy money. It was it was heavy money. I got it at a dealer, and I had to pay tax. I think when all was said and done, it was over four grand. Paid a lot of money, and that was a lot of money back in 2000. That was heavy cash. But as you can see. From, these are the original tires on it so when I got it it was almost new and it was a 4x4 which was kind of a considered a real nice thing back then so I, I paid for it this has been a workhorse this has been bulletproof reliable I, I love this machine and if the other one is just an uglier version all the better it'll be nice to have something I could uh, I could just permanently have ready to work right this one um, this one needs to go back under cover again so you guys know I love buying all-terrain vehicles and I succeeded in finding <coughs> another one nothing makes me happier got a load of projects going on I think you guys would be impressed if I ever managed to finish any of them but in the meantime, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Honestly, I'm always saying this. You don't know how many you're going to get, so get out and have some fun. Bye now.